Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, Smishek's Custom Base, Rick Smishek here. Um, today we're not going to make anything. Um, instead, today we're going to talk about a book titled Knowing Bass by Dr. Keith Jones. Um, doctor is a PhD kind of doctor. Um, it says on the front of this, the scientific approach to catching more fish. All right. This book is the culmination of 16 years of research by Dr. Jones. Um, when he was working for Berkeley Power Baits. Um, and the CEO or owner at the time um, gave the okay for Dr. Jones to write a book. And this is that book. Um, this book will never again be released because Berkeley Baits has, has new management and they've said that they're not going to authorize another release of the book. So however many copies are out there, that's it. Um, I saw a mint condition copy for five thousand dollars no way that's a collector's item um and i'm not buying i don't yeah i'm not i'm not paying five grand for a book i don't care what's in it, i'm not paying five grand for it um i paid 128 dollars for mine and you can't even tell that the that the uh pages if i open up you, they don't it doesn't even look like the book's been read um, you, I could have got a, uh, a paperback copy, but, well, paperbacks, you read them once and they're kind of beat up. You read them a second time, they get a little bit more beat up. It's just the nature of that beast. Um, and I wanted a book that I would be able to keep, keep around for a long time. Um, and we can't even get Kindle versions of it. So. so what's the book about? Well, it's about how bass interact with their environment. What makes them tick? What makes them strike? Um, how do their senses work? Um, and today, the, well, the first chapter is, um, that's what we're going to go over today is the first chapter. Um, you can see how thick the book is. There's, there's only eight chapters. Um, the first chapter is relatively short, so we shouldn't have too terribly long of a video for today. Um, but um, the other chapter is a little bit more in-depth, and I might be splitting some of those chapters up some or all of them, up into multiple videos. Um, so I don't want to bore you guys to death here. Um, but with that said, first of all, we all know, well, the, I was talking about the first chapter. The first chapter deals with, the, um, with general information about what ha you know, the, basket, the, the eggs get laid, they hatch a couple days later, um, and then how their senses develop with the timeline or how they, how they develop uh, um, as, as, they, as they grow. And in just in a month, their, their senses are all developed. They're, um, they're, ready to, they're ready to be hunting machines, hunting killing machines, I guess. Um, and then the rest, the, the rest of the chapter focuses on the general aspects of how a bass finds its food. Um, later chapters, we'll get into more, more detail on that. Um, I think we all know that, that bass have the ability to open their mouth so wide so quickly that they create a vacuum that sucks their food into their mouth. Okay? When they do that, the food doesn't get sucked real deep into their mouth um, like it does when they use their other strike, the other way they strike. Um, the other way they strike, Dr. Jones calls it running over their prey. And they can, a bass can move, and I was surprised by this, a bass can move Three times, no matter how long, how big the bass is or how small, a bass can move approximately three times their body length in per second. Okay, so when a bass feeds like that, when they run over their prey like that, they get the food deeper in their mouth and it gets swallowed quicker, um, and and with less chance for the prey to escape. Um, <clears throat> and depending on how fast the prey is moving or how fast the prey is generally depends on whether or not a bass will suck it in or run it over um and i'm you'll see me referring to my notes here quite a bit um because i'd never remember all this stuff to talk to you guys if i didn't make the notes um bass prefer as far as their food um they prefer small fish crustaceans and insects in their larvae in that order all right 
Now, a bass will eat just about anything that's in their environment that's small enough to get in their mouth, but this is what they prefer in the, and in the order that they prefer. And their sensory um, tuning is biased towards those same things, small fish, crustaceans, insects, and their larvae. Um, the, for, the, for the fish, it's a small, uh, it's not just the visual shape, but it's also the, the, the quick darting movements, swimming movements of the small fish. It's the um, crawling of the crustaceans, or like in the, in the uh, when it comes to like crawdads or crawfish, crayfish, however, what do you want to call them, because what part of the country you're in, um, they have the ability to scoot really quickly. They can crawl along, right? They can scoot really quickly. Um, and the insects have like a fluttering motion in the water. So um, that's what a bass is sensory suite. Their, their detection abilities are tuned towards. They have a bias towards that. Um, so I think it's obvious that if we pick baits that can do those things, like say a soft plastic or a hard plastic jerk bait, well, you know, we know we know how to move that. Those quick darting movements, that pause, right? And that's and that imitates the, the minnows that are in the water. Those 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 longer, uh, uh, long thinner. Uh, bait fish that are they're at, they're in the most waters, um, jigs and like tube tube baits can can mimic a crawfish. Um, and of course, you have flies, whatever you can tie to, to mimic to mimic insects. Um, it, heck, even some soft plastics. I have I have a dragonfly mold that can imitate the dragonflies. So um, that's what we want to. I know it's stating the obvious, but sometimes we don't always think of the obvious. We want to we want to pick lures that can trigger or they can put off those same signals that the, that the, that those that the prey we're trying to imitate put off. Um, we know why they attack live bait like little fish, crawdads, whatever, because it's food, right? But why do they attack artificial wood? Soft plastics, hard plastics, jigs, okay? Well, a bass's thought processes aren't nearly as complex as ours are, okay? It relies on its sensory input to determine whether or not to go ballistic on something, okay? Um, and the bass, when they're searching for food, their sensory analysis, it, the, it doesn't have to meet a whole list of criteria. It can meet just like one or two things, and, the, and then all of a sudden it becomes a potential target for attack. Um, I don't know how many of you have, have fished in real clear water. You can see the fish, and it's looking at your lure, and it doesn't know what it's going to do yet. Um, it kind of acts like it, maybe it wants to eat it, but it doesn't. So your next cast, you throw it out there, you do something a little bit different with it. Um, and you just keep doing that until the bass says, oh, look, food, and attacks it. Okay. When you've finally encouraged it or enticed it to, to attack, well, we need to make note of that. Okay. Because now we've just triggered some of the sensory stimuli that cause that bass to attack a lure. Okay. Um, I've been guilty of not remembering that or making a note of it, whatever. We probably all have. Um, but because the bass doesn't need, we don't need to, to mimic, say, a minnow completely, that explains why bass will attack um, lures that don't actually really look a whole lot like their food because the lure is just mimicking part of what a bait fish, in this case a bait fish, looks like and acts like, okay? Um, that's why we get strikes on this probably. There's probably something about this, this blade thumping that attracts them, and then they come over, they see this rubber skirt flopping around, you know, doing this, doing this rubber skirt thing, you know, and they say, oh, wow, maybe this is food. They might not even think it is food, but there might be a chance that it's food. Might you know? Might there might be just enough that they think, oh, 
maybe it is food, so they, so they attack it. But there's definitely something about spinner baits because when they first came out, um, in, for, as far as for bass tournaments, and they were winning tournaments all left and right. They still work, um, although we don't hear as much about them as we used to. Um, and here's something I didn't know. Bass continually refine their senses to be able to better find their prey. And their prey are constantly changing their signals to avoid detection. Okay? This This explains why at any given time a lure has the potential to be more attractive as potential food than actual food does. There'll be days when you can you can outfish some guy with this this fishing with live bait, you know, because in this in this case the the, the fish on both sides the prey and the and the predator have they're 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 not quite in sync like they should be because things are constantly changing between the two of them. It's a constant competition, as it were. Um, one for survival, well, actually both for survival. One doesn't want to get eaten, and the other wants to eat so it can survive. Um, but that's a I, I need to know that. But that's a a constant evolving process between predator and prey. Um, And also, bass don't necessarily strike lures out of, um, out of hunger. And I'm going to read this next part to make sure I don't miss anything. They do it out of, for, for, out of competition. How many times have you, have you seen, have you hooked a fish and seen more fish swimming, trying to catch, trying to get the food, that, the food that's in their mouth? I caught a, I, I hooked a bass on, on a spinnerbait. I don't think it was one of the old ones of those. Um, but as I got it close to shore, there was another bass swimming alongside it, trying to take the trying to take the spinnerbait. I thought, "Whoa, what the heck?" Well, that's competition for food. If the second bass saw the food, there wasn't all the way in the other one's mouth, and it's trying to eat too. Um, territor territorial defense is another one. There's another reason why. And uh, male bass guarding nests. That's an example of territorial defense. Um, they attack stuff, especially. You ever see him grab a bluegill and spit it right back out and the bluegill lays there stunned? I have. Um, in that case, they're not attacked. They didn't attack the bluegill to eat it. They attacked it to get it out of the nest so it wouldn't eat the fry or the eggs. Um, another one is aggravation. You can aggravate a fish, drag the same lure past it so many times, it finally just gets ticked off and, 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 and strikes out of aggravation. Tries to eat the lure. Um, a reflex. Uh, a reflex strike. You can uh, not long ago, I, I threw a frog, plastic frog, um, up on the. It, it landed on the bank, and I popped it into the water. And as soon as it hit the water, bam! A bass took it. That was most likely a reflex strike. Something fell into the water or jumped into the water from the shoreline, and the bass didn't probably didn't even really look too much to see what it was because that strike was almost instant. That was just that's a reflex action on the fish's part. I'm sure we've all probably done something like that, but now we know what that is. And just their, a bass's belligerent personality can be another reason why they strike, because they're belligerent all the time. That's what they do, you know. Um, so these are other reasons we can, these are other, uh, other things we can take into account when we're, when we're choosing which lure to use today, or which lure to use at a, at a new lake, a new river, whatever. Um, so it's actually getting pretty complex already, isn't it? We're, we're, we're just getting right towards the end of this first chapter, and we're already looking at pretty complex issues for why a bass will, will attack a lure and our options to try to trigger those strikes. Um, <clears throat> But it's likely that of all those things I just listed, that it's some sort of sensory stimuli that causes each one of those re each one of those reactions from the bass, whether it's competition or whatever. You know, in the one case, the first one, the, the competition for food. You know, well, with with that with that spinner bait, 
well, look, we just had one fish try to eat it. Another fish is hungry. He wants to eat too, you know. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, but there is, no, there is no perfect lure, even, even old reliable wasn't perfect. Even old reliable, sometimes I'd, I'd tie it on and I wouldn't catch anything. Most of the time I did, but that was why I called it old reliable. But there were times when even old reliable wouldn't catch fish. I'd have to go through my tackle box and look for other things that I could try to try to trigger those strikes. And as anglers, Our job, or the trick is, I guess, is to find a lure and a retrieve that best triggers those strikes that, that, that hits those sensory stimuli in the waters that we fish. Okay, um, There was a place where I fished with a casting bubble and a purple and chartreuse woolly bugger, okay? There's only a couple of places where I fish that, that setup where it's just been like magic. Hey, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going catching today because I'm going with that casting bubble and that purple and chartreuse spinnerbait or woolly bugger. Um, and what I would do is I would cast, put a little water in the casting bubble to give me the weight to throw it. Um, and then I just keep twitching the rod tip like this, the entire retrieve. And there was something about that retrieve along with the lure that just, it triggered, it, in, in the bodies of water where it worked, and it triggers every fish, every species in there. The one like I caught large enough bass, I caught bluegill, um, I caught a bullhead one night on it, um, I caught perch on it, um, I caught wiper, Trout, um, smallmouth bass, um, crappie. Um, I've caught a whole bunch of different species of fish off that one setup. Now, I'll have to sit down and try to analyze what was it about that setup that triggered the strike reactions in the fish. All right? And I just now thought of that, actually. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to, to the next chapter of this of this book, and I'm and like I said, I don't know whether we'll be I'll be doing an entire chapter next week, or just part of the, just part of the second chapter. But this this information here gives us some things to think about already. So, um, and I will be making another video this week of um, I'll, be, I'll be making something. Um, and we'll be I'll be doing this this book as a series, so um, I hope you guys tune into that. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I've enjoyed reading the book, and uh, and seeing how, how expensive it is, most of you probably won't buy it. Um, so I wouldn't mind sharing the information from the book here in my videos. So, if that said, folks, if you liked what you saw today, hit the like button. If 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 you haven't already subscribed please hit the subscribe button um, and hit the little bell so you get notifications when I get a new video up. Um, and share. If you share with everybody you know, friends, your enemies, your frenemies, relatives, even if you don't like your relatives, um, that helps the channel grow. And we're growing steadily. Um, one day last, was it last week or the week before? I got five subscribers in one day. You want to have to say that? Yes, please. <laughs> um, but um, this morning it was 680 subscribers, so we're getting there, um, slowly but surely. Uh, as the, the 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 race between the tortoise and the hare is slow and steady, wins the race. Well, maybe that's what we're doing here. Um, but until next time, folks. Tight lines, calm waters, and God bless. <laughs>